on the last day of 2020 I actually went to the Shorncliffe Jetty just to get a couple of twilight images of the last day of the year. I like having just a couple of photos just to mark the end of a year and basically the start of a new year. So the 31st found me at the Shorncliffe Jetty just about at sunset. Now sunset itself wasn't all that crash hot and the Shorncliffe Jetty faces east. So it was actually facing opposite sunset, but there was hardly any clouds about on the western horizon. So I thought I'd actually shoot some nice images here right at about the time of sunset. I actually did a video a while ago on using the Nikon 18 to 140mm lens for landscape photography. And I still get questions saying like, is it really a worthwhile lens to actually get for landscape photography? Well my answer is yes and I answered that in this video here that I'll actually link up here. Recently I also did a YouTube tutorial on landscape composition. So today I just want to show you a couple of photos that I took on this day explaining why I actually think that the 18 to 140 Nikon lens is actually quite a good lens and also to actually give you an idea of when you're out and about not just to settle for one composition or one zoom range like the Nikon 18 to 140 I have a range of from 18 mil all the way to 140 millimeter so on this afternoon I actually shot at various focal lengths at various shutter speeds and also at various ISO range and I will actually show you these photos now what the photos looked like before they were edited and also what the photos looked like edited and why I actually edited these images in this certain fashion. So let's take a look at these photos. So now let's take a look at these eight images. This first image here was taken at 60 millimeters, 1 15th of a second, f11 and ISO 100. This second one here I actually zoomed in at 105 millimeters still at 1 15th of a second f11 and ISO 100. The next one here I zoom back out to 30 millimeters still at 1 15th of a second f11 ISO 100. The next one here I actually put a six stop ND filter on at 40 mils to give me a long exposure of 20 seconds at f11 and ISO 100. I just wanted one image of long exposure but You'll see when it's edited, it actually doesn't look this night, that nice. The next one here, I quickly took off the ND filter and it was taken at the same focal range of 40 mils, but now at one fifth of a second, F11, ISO 100. These next two were taken at 18 mils, one fifth of a second, at F11 and ISO 100. And the last one here, you can see there's just a faint amount of light on the jetty and this was taken at 116 mils down the beach away from the jetty because I've actually moved my composition 1 40th of a second at f5.6 and ISO 1000. So this is my first image that has now been edited in Adobe Lightroom Classic and what I like about this image is you can actually see like light rays angling down into the center of the image but I thought I was actually a little bit too far away so I like this composition, this framing, but I just wanted to zoom in a bit more to highlight the fishermen, the people walking on the jetty, and also so I could actually highlight these light rays that were coming in. So now you can see I've actually zoomed in to 105 mils. Although the people are small, they're much more defined, but can you see the light rays? The light rays, the detail in the cloud, the detail in the jetty is much more defined. So I actually like this image much better than the first. So this is the next image and the colors had changed quite a bit between the last image and this one. I'd waited about 10 minutes and now the sun has actually left the side of the jetty and it was actually getting quite dark in the foreground here. So I just increased the shadows a little bit and I just added with the use of an ND grad just a bit of contrast and clarity in the clouds here just so that I could define them. Now this image here is the one that I used the six stop ND grad and you can see the water is all blurred and because the clouds weren't moving very fast we've ended up with a very washed out sky 
and this is what I tell people sometimes, it's great using ND filters and I love long exposures but in this image I took it just to show people that sometimes it's just not worth the hassle. This image doesn't really excite me at all. It's quite bland and there's nothing interest in the sky because they're all sort of very slow moving cloud you just have this washed out look. So I took the ND filter off and this is what the image looks like without the ND filter. You can see there's quite a lot of color in the sky and again using just an ND grad in Adobe Lightroom just to give me a bit more clarity in these clouds here actually brings up the image quite nice. It looks like a very stormy late afternoon image. Now these are the two images that I took from each side of the jetty. So I walked onto the jetty and I took this image first because I really liked how the clouds had lit up over the horizon here. But looking at the image, the composition was very good but I really didn't like these light poles. They were very distracting to me. So I just walked from the right side of the jetty to the left side and took this image. Can you see the difference that just moving around actually gives? This is a much more appealing image. We can see all the light poles, but they are not as in your face as the other image. Now, I waited about 15 minutes, walked a bit further along the beach, and zoomed in and took this image here. And you can see that the light was just coming through the clouds a little bit and it just lit up this gazebo area here quite nicely against a very moody sky. Now you might wonder why I actually was using an ISO of 1000. Well, I didn't want to have blurred water here. If I was using an ISO of let's say 200, my shutter speed would have been so low that all the foreground here, the water would have just been blurred. The sky as well would have been washed out. So I wanted a sharpness in the image. I actually want to see the waves crashing and all that. So this is why I actually settled on a shutter speed of 1 40th of a second, an aperture of f5.6, which was the minimum that I could use at this focal range. And I just kept increasing my ISO until I had a correctly exposed image. So as you can see, I only spent about an hour down there on that day and by changing my composition by zooming in and out and adjusting my shutter speed sometimes I end up coming home with quite a few very different images and this is what I tell people when you're out taking photos that one you actually think about the composition you want and don't put all your eggs in the one basket which means don't just stay in one spot, move around a little bit because sometimes when the light changes, because it might mean that when the light changes, especially at the star of a day for sunrise or for a sunset, that as the light moves about, you might have to just pick up your tripod and move a little bit just to get the best lighting on your subject. So I hope this tutorial has just given you some hints and just a bit of advice on when you're out and about to think about how you're taking the photos. Should you zoom in? Should you just stay at the one focal range for your, all your images? If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. This is Charles for Charles in Photography. See you next time.